This is Marie from Underground Crafter and welcome to my first pattern for the Knitted Kitchen Blog Hop. And you can find more about this in the notes whether you're on YouTube or Facebook watching this video because this pattern is one of 48 patterns for uh, free dishcloths which include tutorials. It's going to be done with me and several other designers. So do check it out. Anyway, today's pattern is a stitch called the Double End Illusion Stitch, and I'm not sure where the name comes from, but I've seen it with that name in several different stitch guides. So that's what I'm going with. I am using Lion Brand 24-7 Cotton in color purple, 147, and a number seven knitting needle. Uh, I'm using my Denise To Go kit, but you can use any knitting needle that gets you a type of um, tension that you think looks pretty with your pattern. For this particular particular stitch it's a multiple of three stitches plus one plus five stitch borders on each side so for this particular little swatch here I have 20 stitches but again it would be any multiple of three stitches and then once you uh, have enough multiples then you're going to add one uh, for the edge stitch and ten for the five stitch borders on each side so once you have your stitches casted on, the first row is going to be pretty straightforward. You're going to knit across to the very last stitch and then you're going to purl one. And this is really just a border row. I'm starting with four border rows, but of course you could dive right into the pattern if you want. Uh, but I like to leave a garter stitch border because I think it usually makes everything you know lay a lot flatter and just look a little bit better um, it also has a little bit of a finished edge and so I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna make the edge look in a moment when we get to the end of this row so again it's gonna be knitting straight across and for those that might not remember again the knit stitches where you have the yarn in back you insert your needle from the front you wrap the yarn around counterclockwise and then you pull the yarn through to the front and drop off your loop. So that's a knit stitch and we're going to do this all the way across. Ooh. Sometimes I put on a little bit of lotion so my hands would be smooth for the video and then it led me to losing my loop there. So we're going to, as I said, knit across to the last stitch and then we're going to purl. And for the purl you want the yarn in front. You're going to insert your needle to the front. Wrap the yarn counterclockwise and then slide it through to the back and slip off the loop. Now I am going to be ending every row with a purl and starting every row after that first one with a slip stitch. And so to slip the stitch we're going to keep the yarn in back, we're going to insert our needle and just slide that loop over here. And you'll see why in a moment it'll make a pretty nice edging. Uh, all the way across of this pattern. So again for this next border row we're going to knit across to the last stitch and then purl one and I'll catch you at the end of the row. And again we're at the last stitch we're going to bring the yarn to the front and purl one and you'll be able to see on this next row you can see that the edges will look kind of like a big chain and that's from the combination of slipping one at the beginning of the row and ending with the purl one at the end of the row. So for the next two border rows we're going to repeat the row we just did. We're going to start with a slip stitch with the yarn in the back and then we're going to knit to the last stitch and then we're going to purl one. And so that will kind of, uh, we'll do that for this row and then the next row and then we'll be done with our border rows and we'll be ready to start the double and illusion stitch. Now for this particular pattern I'm showing you how to make it in the dishcloth form so that's why it has the border. The stitch pattern of course doesn't require you to have a border. As I said for the stitch by itself it's just a multiple of three um, plus one. And now we're gonna purl in our last stitch of this row and then one more row repeating that again and you'll see that the the stitch that you purl is kind of loose don't worry about that it'll look very attractive once you're done so then you're gonna again slip the first stitch knit across to the last stitch and then purl one and that'll be the end of our border rows so for this particular dishcloth I'm doing four border rows now again in the pattern that I have listed and I'll have a link to the exact pattern as well as a link to the rest of this blog hop so you can get the other patterns. 
I actually cast on 56 to start. So that was my original multiple of three stitches plus one plus five on each side for the border. But for this particular uh, little piece here, I only did 20. Okay, so those are our border rows. And now we're gonna start with row one. And guess what? Row one is actually the same as the border rows in this case. I know that's probably not very exciting, but here we go. You're going to slip one, knit across to the last stitch, and then purl one. And this is a kind of uh, nice beginner friendly pattern, which is why I picked it for the first one in the blog hop. There's not too many unusual things going on. So if you are new to knitting, or if you like to do mindless knitting while you're watching TV, or if you're a little bit out of practice with patterns, this is a perfect stitch for you. So that's the first row, we end with our uh, purl. And now we're going to do the first different row that we've done in a while. So again, we're gonna start with a slip one. Now you're gonna really see the border on the sides. We're going to knit four, so one, two, three, four, and this will be our five stitch border on the side. Now we're going to purl across to the last five. So we're gonna bring the yarn in front, we're gonna insert the needle in the front, wrap the yarn over counterclockwise, pull it out through the back. So that's a purl. We're gonna purl all the way across to the last five stitches. And again, this is if you have the five stitches on each side border. If you are not using the border, you would just purl across to the last stitch. But I think the border looks pretty nice. And I think, is that five? Yes, okay, so now when we get to the last five, it's a garter stitch border, so we're gonna return to knitting. We're gonna knit the next three, I mean the next four, sorry, one, two, three, four. And then as always, we're gonna end with that purl stitch, so don't forget to bring the yarn to the front for that. Okay. So that was row two of the stitch pattern. Now row three is that same row one, which also happened to be our border row. So we're going to slip the first stitch, knit across to the last stitch, and then in the last stitch, we're gonna purl one. And again, um, this is, as you may recall, this is a stockinette type of stitch pattern. So uh, for folks that are newer to knitting, stockinette stitch is when you have knit on one side and purl on one side. And garter stitch is when you knit on both sides and that has this more rigid, uh, sorry, ridged texture. Again, you're gonna end with that purl one. Where stockinette stitch looks like these little knit Vs uh, from the front and like the bumps of a purl from the back. Okay, now we're gonna do the last row of our pattern repeat. This is row four, and this I think is the most interesting row of the pattern. So you're gonna, this will be the one that'll keep you a little bit on your toes. It's gonna start the same as our other rows with our border. So we're gonna slip one, and then we're gonna knit four. So one, two, oops, three, four. So now we'll have that five stitches at the beginning for the border. And now we're gonna do our double end illusion stitch. It's gonna start with a purl one. So we're gonna bring the yarn to the front and purl one. Oops. Okay. Now we're gonna begin the pattern repeat. And this is gonna be repeated all the way across to the last five stitches for your border. Or if you're not using your border, it's gonna be repeated all the way across. And what you're gonna do is you're going to knit two and then purl one. So keep the yarn in back now. We're gonna knit two, one, two, and then we're gonna bring the yarn to the front and purl one. Again, we're gonna repeat that. So knit one, knit two, and bring the yarn to the front and purl one. Now I know for a lot of beginning knitters, it's easy to remember, not to remember to move the yarn back and forth. So after that purl, don't forget to leave it in the back. And then you're gonna knit one, knit two, and then bring the yarn to the front and purl one. And again, you're gonna be repeating that sequence, that knit two, purl one, all the way across until you have 
five stitches. If you're doing a little swatch like me, you might be done already. If you're making the swashcloth pattern, you might have way more repeats before that. Once you get to the last four, we're gonna do our same border we've been doing. So we're gonna knit four, three, four, then we're gonna bring the yarn to the front and we're gonna purl one. Now on those rows where we've been knitting across, we don't have to stop for the border because we're knitting straight across. So now let's just give a little reminder of the pattern and you can see these little ridges starting to form. We're gonna repeat those four rows again. And remember row one is slip one, knit to the last stitch and then purl one. So we're including our border in this because remember, our border is garter stitch, so it's always knitting. And so uh, we're just gonna be working our way across very easily. And then uh, that's row one. So again, row one is slip one, knit to the last stitch, purl one, and you'll recognize it as the same pattern that we were using for our border rows. And again, don't forget to slip the yarn to the front when you purl. And then we're going to row two in the pattern. And row two in the pattern is to slip one, then to knit four for the border, for our garter stitch border, which is five stitches long. It includes that slip stitch uh, on the front. So we have five stitches for the border. And now we're gonna purl across to the last five stitches. So we're bringing our yarn to the front. And then we're gonna purl all the way across. And so this is kind of laying down that stockinette foundation for our pattern where we're alternating rows between knit and purl, but our borders are still gonna be garter stitch. And the reason I said again for that is that they tend to lay flatter when they have a garter stitch border. So that's our last five. We're gonna bring the yarn to the back again and then knit four, one, two, three, four. And then we're going to bring the yarn to the front again and purl the last stitch. And again, you can see this uh, edge that's forming and that's again from starting with the slip stitch and ending with the purl one. It's giving us this very nice, neat edge. Row three is just a repeat of row one. So again, that'll be slip one and knit across to the last stitch and then purl one. And I'll just catch you at the end of the row. Okay, and we're here at our last stitch. We're gonna bring the yarn to the front and then purl one. Now we're gonna do row four, which is our most interesting round in this pattern. Again, we're gonna start with our slip one stitch, then our border, which will be knit four. One, two, three, four. Then we're gonna bring the yarn to the front and purl one stitch. Then we're gonna put the yarn in the back and we're gonna start our stitch pattern which again is gonna be knit two, purl one, all the way across to the last five stitches. So knit two, one, two, bring the yarn to the front, purl one. We're gonna repeat that, bring the yarn to the back, knit two, one, two, bring the yarn to the front, purl one, and bring the yarn to the back, and we'll repeat that again, knit two, knit one, knit two, bring the yarn to the front, and purl one. And here we are at our last five stitches. So we're gonna do our border, which is knit four, three, four, and then ending with that purl one stitch. So don't forget to bring your yarn to the front first. So let's take a peek at how this stitch pattern is setting out. So these are our garter stitch borders, and this little bump and kind of grid is our double Andalusian stitch. So you're gonna repeat this pattern row one through four until the piece is as long as you want, ending after row three. So row three was the row uh, that is very similar to our border row where we would knit one, I'm uh, sorry, slip one, knit across the last stitch and purl one. So after our final row three, we're going to repeat that border row, which is actually the same as row three. It's slip one, knit across to last stitch, purl one. We're gonna repeat that four times and that's how we're going to set our border. So I'm gonna um, meet you at that end and then we'll bind off together. Okay, so now you have finished your uh, pattern 
as many rows as you want and you've ended with your four border rows and now it's time to bind off now I tend to bind off pretty tightly so I'm actually going to switch my needle to a size larger and I always do that when I bind off to make sure that I don't bind off too tightly and with these needles it's pretty easy you can just um, switch out one side but you don't have to do this obviously if you bind off like a normal person but I have trouble with it so I know a lot of knitters get nervous about binding off so I'm just going to walk through this as well so for the bind off we're going to use the same pattern that we've been using for the border rows so we're going to slip the first stitch knit across and purl the last stitch so we're going to slip the first one and then we're going to knit the next stitch and then once we have two on the needles we're going to insert our needle in the furthest uh, so if you're right-handed this will be your right needle you're gonna use the one that's furthest to your right if you're doing this left-handed it'll be the one furthest to your left and then you're gonna lift that over the loop that you have on the needle and then you're just gonna keep adding one stitch and then binding it off so again we'll be knitting across the last stitch so then lifting it over and it's kind of like a game of leapfrog if you ever played that as a kid so you're gonna knit one then insert your needle and lift it over and again knit one insert your needle and lift it over and all the way across uh, until the last stitch where we'll be doing a purl one and again that's just to keep that nice edging um, so again you'll just be knitting one and then binding off one after you started with those first two and there are other methods to bind off so if you have one that you prefer you can do that instead this is just a method that I like because um, it makes a kind of again it makes a similar edge to what we're seeing on the side and so it just looks uh, to my mind more symmetrical but of course feel free to use your preferred bind off method because this isn't the type of pattern where it will matter very much uh, which type of bind off that you do because really it's a dishcloth so you know it's going to be getting a lot of use uh, it's although we want them to be pretty that's not their primary role their primary role is to be rugged so I say the bind off that you're the most comfortable with is probably going to be the sturdiest one in my opinion okay so we're almost right to the end so when we get to the very last stitch uh, we're still going to purl one so we're going to bring the yarn to the front and then purl one and then we're going to bind off again and oops uh, with this very last stitch that we have on the needle all we're going to do is we're going to cut this yarn and then pull it through this loop and then that's how we're going to bind off the whole project so i hope you've enjoyed the double and illusion stitch and i would appreciate it if you would subscribe to uh, my channel or to my page. Thank you so much and have a wonderful week.